Right, anyway, crankshaft out. Hurrah. So the last job we've got to do is to take the conrods off the uh, take the conrods off the crankshaft, and then we're kind of fully dismantled, and then we can start assessing the job and cleaning out the crankshaft, etc., etc., cleaning everything up, working out what needs replacing, uh, ready for reassembly. Right, uh, I'm going to take off the, uh, I think the, the uh, timing side conrod first, just for the sake of argument, and uh, let's see what we got. Uh, yeah, oops, that always helps if we use the right size uh, socket. That's better. Right, oh, again, again, oh, you probably can't see that, again, look at that, great, virtually brand new, I'd say, virtually brand new, I'm just uh, uh, holding this, so I want to put it back in the same way that I took it out, well, obviously, I know this is time inside, but of course, I could put it in either way around. And I want to put it back in, if, it, if we are going to use the same shells. Have I got that right? Yeah, I'm going to be going one way. Uh, let's have a look. Should be punched yet. Yeah. We've got a punch mark on the uh, on the bottom of the... Uh, there's a punch mark there, if you can see it. And there's a punch mark there to show that that's the way they, they go back together. They don't go that way. Okay, and so I'm just going to pop those back on for now. And uh, it'll, we'll have a look at the others, but <laughs> it's just typical that we've done all this work and it looks like this engine has been rebuilt very, very recently. Very. Although that camshaft What's going on there? Suddenly I've got a very tight conrod. It's not spinning properly, that. It's not wanting to come apart either. Hmm, that could be a problem. I wonder what that is. Centre conrod doesn't want to come off. And suddenly it's tightened up. I'm sure it wasn't tight before. Yeah, the drive side con rod. It's nice and loose. Let's try that one. Yeah, again, virtually, virtually untouched, untouched shells, untouched bearings. So. There we go. We won't be reusing these nuts. Never ever reuse the big end nuts. It's just a false economy. Right, can you see this? This, uh, this, uh, it's, 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 it's tightened right up. And, uh, I can't, and the bottom doesn't want to come off. No. So I don't know what's happened. But we want to get it off. I'm just putting I'm just uh, putting the conrods back on loosely so that uh, I don't get them all mixed up and then I'll take them off and label them up properly which way round you know which one it is and which way round it goes in a minute. But uh, what's going on here? This uh, does not want to come off. 
Was that moving at all? No. Mm. That's something very strange going on there. So maybe there is a problem with that centre centre com rod. But I want to come. <laughs> Until I get it off, we won't know. I think you can see me wrestling with it, can you? Yeah. Mm. No. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, for a start, it's been put on the wrong way round the cap. Look, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a centre, there's a punch on the bottom there, but not on the top, and the punch on the top is this way, so that cap has been fitted the wrong way round. Yeah, it's the right way round on that one, punch to punch, but this one is definitely, this cap, this centre cap is definitely been fitted the wrong way round. The punch is this side, you know, the punches are on opposite sides to each other. You probably can't see that, but, you know, there's a punch mark up there on the, on the con rod and the punch mark on the cap is on the other side. So that's definitely not right. So I don't know what, it's weird, this engine seems to be rebuilt and rebuilt well in some ways and then in other ways terribly. So who knows what's been going on. Oh, I need a piece of wood. Small enough to get in there. Mm. Hammer. Yep. Okay, so I'll put the hammer shaft on the edge of the bottom of the bottom of the con rod. There, there. Off it goes. Now. virtually new but there does seem to be a bit more marking on this centre con rod like it's probably had some metal trapped underneath it some swarf or something so that shell is definitely a wrong, wrong way around the, the bottom that's the way it should go so I'm going to put it back on the way it should go regardless of the fact that's the way it came off and that's it's still not there's some definite tightness there definite and that's where it moved around the right way it's a bit better I mean obviously it's not torqued up but it's definitely tight, so that's not right. Maybe just replacing the shells is probably going to sort that problem. I don't know. It could be we need to uh, hone the hone the journals. Right. But there we go. What I'm going to do is I'm just uh, I'm going to take I'm going to label the con rods up and then take them off and then. The engine is completely uh, disassembled. Okay, so there we have the uh, engine dismantled. That's all the engine uh, in various uh, plastic boxes, uh, all bagged up and labelled up. Uh, okay. And uh, these are the last bits, the crankcases and the crankshaft. <clears throat> so everything's... Uh, Taken apart now, uh, ready for inspection. Just before we go any further, hey, I've got a new phone. And a new phone means it's got a new camera, as it were. And suddenly everything's twice as clear as it was. <laughs> I think I should have done this a long time ago. My old camera literally, or phone, literally fell apart. And, uh, um, yeah, you sort of, you don't realise that the thing's getting a bit old and tired, you know, until you get a new one. Anyway... There's the new, uh, there's the uh, new camera. There is the engine. So what we're going to do now, it's all apart, is we're going to clean it up a bit and then we're going to uh, start inspecting all the parts for wear and deciding exactly what, uh, what needs to be replaced and so on. Uh, what I will probably do, actually, before clearing up, I will probably take the main bearing out the drive side the main ball bearing, bearing race out of the drive side, simply because 
in cleaning up that case, <clears throat> I may well get to dirt and grit into that bearing. So it'd be best to take it out. So to take it out, it's pretty straightforward. I might not do it on camera. It's a massive circlip on either side. I think that holds it in. <clears throat> Is it on either side? I can't remember. Yeah, there's one, there's a massive circlip either side. You can take those out, heat the casing up, get it really, really hot, maybe in the oven, and then that bearing will, will probably, uh, it will just fall out. Um, oh, and that, what I haven't done, that is the uh, the anti-drain valve. I haven't taken that out yet. So I'll, I'll take that so a little spring with a wall bearing on the end that allegedly stops the oil from draining from the oil tank into the sump of the engine, but generally they don't work too well. Uh, but anyway, we'll be cleaning everything up and then we'll be inspecting the uh, journals on the crankshaft. Uh, we'll be checking these new, uh, the, the actual uh, bearing shells, probably replacing them. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and then deciding what, what needs to be replaced and so on before we reassemble. So um, just a couple of things, just while I'm, this is my initial sort of impression that the, the engine's a bit strange because what I've done is I've had a very quick look at the crankshaft. We will do this in the next video, but I've had a very quick look and realized that the, the end of the um, uh, oilways in the crankshaft have grub screws put in, which are a nightmare to get out. Anyway, I had a quick look at the grub screws and discovered that they have already been replaced at some point with um, grub screws with a uh, with a hex uh, drive on, so that you can get them out, you know, with a uh, with a with a hex uh, Allen key. Uh, so obviously, at some point this crankshaft has been taken apart and cleaned and proper new grub screws put in which is great it's also had the timing uh, adjusted the valve timing to create optimum power which is great i've also recently just noticed that it's had this uh, upgrade done where the return uh, the scavenge pipe has been enlarged to the same size uh, Sorry, the inlet. Sorry, the inlet uh, pipe when the oil goes in has been enlarged to the same size as a scavenge pipe, where the oil goes back to the tank. Um, and this is what they did on the T160s. Now that should be a smaller diameter, a smaller bore pipe, but someone has upgraded that to a, the T160, which means there's more flow, oil flow going into the engine. It doesn't increase pressure necessarily. It's the same oil pump, but uh, uh, it does increase flow. So that's been done. That's that's a good thing. Um, this, by the way, is the oil pressure relief valve. Uh, so that if oil pressure is too high, uh, that, that, that kicks in and bypasses the, uh, the uh, begins and so on. So uh, I'll be taking that off as well. Anyway, so that's been, that's been done. The crankshaft has been done. The oil pipe has been done. The valve timing has been done. So obviously someone has spent time on this engine. At the same time, obviously there has been damage some probably a, a conrod's broken in the past, but at the same at the same time, someone has fitted the conrod backwards. You know, the two halves are backwards. Someone uh, fitted that um, you know this uh, the, this uh, little roller bearing at the uh, this the bottom roller bear needle roller bearing has been incorrectly fitted, uh, and. We I believe that the, the, the exhaust camshaft is tight. And of course, it's been pouring oil out of the uh, push rod tubes. So it's a bit of an enigma. Someone who knows what they're doing has done this engine, but at the same time, it's been done well, and at the same time, it's been done badly. So maybe it's been rebuilt more than once. We don't know, because obviously we don't know what damage has happened uh, you know, in here and with the crankshaft and so on. But it is a bit strange um you know there's some very good things and yet some basic errors at the same time so there we go anyway engine all now stripped i'm going to clean it up and then uh i'm going to clean we'll, we'll do this on camera we'll don't worry we'll be cleaning out the crankshaft and so on then i'll be checking all the journals i'll be checking the bores on the cylinders we'll be checking the pistons all the all the wearing parts that we may need to change we'll be rechecking that exhaust camshaft to see what's happening there and when everything is checked we'll then make a decision as to what what we do whether we're reholing or reboring or, or or what we're doing okay and the same same here and new shells and so on okay 
but that's it engine fully dismantled uh so we, so after it's all cleaned up we'll start the checking uh before uh, any engineering work needs to be done any replacement parts bought there we go hopefully therefore not too long uh before the next video obviously life unfortunately is very busy for me at the moment but uh, as soon as we get a chance we'll be cleaning this lot up and uh, getting on with the checks so i can get things sent off to the engineers and we can crack on